Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to uh, wrap up this videos module that we've been working on. And by wrap up, I mean um, there's going to be a lot left to be desired. It's not, you know, a, a really deep module. But what I want to show you with this series is the kind of basics of how to scaffold and set up and kind of get the basics of CRUD out of the way for managing data and then uh, displaying that data on the front end so that you can um, explore some of the other documentation and some of the other videos and start filling in the gaps and working with the tools and services and whatnot that you have uh, learned about elsewhere within this module. This is kind of just like a, a quick, this is how it works, this is how you know these kind of things uh, work together and this is kind of the flow of building a module so that you can take that and learn more about other services um, in more detail and uh, use those going forward. So with that said, what we're going to do is um, wrap this up. We're going to start populating some information and then we're going to view it on the front end and uh, talk about kind of how to make things presentable. <clears throat> so with that said, one thing that I have noticed um, is I forgot to include a video field um, for actually capturing the video URL. Um, I did add the <clears throat> the series and categories field here. And I'm just going to uh, migrate real quick to, to refresh them. And, oop. Oopsies. So I'm going to get those in there, and uh, really while I'm at it, I should probably go get that video field type. And there's one available on GitHub um, that I made, and it's free and uh, open source and everything, and you can actually get that from Packagist as well. So I'm going to get it from there. I'm going to pull it in that way. Uh, video. <clears throat> the video field type. Here we go. I'm just going to copy and paste this require just like that. And that's going to uh, you know, add it to our composer.json and pull it in. And because we're adding it to our composer.json file with this command, it's, it's going to put it in core for us. And uh, if you're working on something yourself, you can also add the, um, the prefer source and it'll, it'll, use the, uh, it'll clone it down rather than just downloading it. I know it works, I know it's good to go, so I'm just going to pull it in and, and use it. Wait for it to install here. And while it's doing that, I'm going to come over here and add the field. I'll do another poster. <clears throat> and video and it's just the video field type and if we come over here and take a look oops, there it is and you'll see it looks uh, you know just like all the other field types um, what this one does is lets us input a let's see I've got matches for Vimeo and YouTube so you can input a URL a view URL for one of those providers a video for it and then you can use it in a multitude of different ways and the way the one I am after if we open up the presenter um, I'm after the fluid output and it basically just wraps the iframe in a fluid uh, display So close that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and migrate once more. Perfect. And now let's uh, go take a look at our add on. Videos. If we create a new one, a poster. Okay, so it looks like we're missing a language key for that. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Okay. 
Okay. And let's go grab a, uh, a video real quick. Let me use this one. Upload that. Select a file. Let's upload something different. Let's see here. Test video, test description, and oh, we need field uh, slugs and names and whatnot for these. Uh, real quick, I'm going to remove this description too. Just, well, nah, no, I keep it in. Never mind. Uh, we don't have any series. Okay. Um, let's create a new series. And a category or two. Okay, and go back to videos and create that. We'll select our pool of shoes. Paste that in. That's fine, and let's do both of those. Let's save and create, and I'll just reload real quick after I do those names. As you see there, if we go back in and edit, we're all good to go. So let's take this and start building out some views with it. Um, the Let's see, I want an index of videos, and just in case you guys haven't caught on yet, this is uh, kind of based on the one that is up on pyrocms.com now. Just spoiler alert. <laughs> um, so I want an index of videos. I want to um, show an index of series and then show videos within a series. And then I also want to uh, do the same for categories. And then, of course, we'll need a video uh, view. And I'm just going to keep these super clean. I don't want to go into uh, in super clean, super simple. I don't want to go into, uh, you know, markup and things like that. I'm going to be focusing on how to uh, grab this stuff and then push it into your views um, so that you can, uh, you can go about your merry way. You don't have to watch me fussing with markup. So the first one, let's do the... Uh, just the index of all videos. And I'm going to make another one here. I'll do the... Uh, <clears throat> let's pull another one here. This one looks fantastic. Oh, no. That was a fake URL they gave me there. Nope. Okay, now let's make one. So what we're going to do is first create our, um, let's create our public controller. And so in our source directory, in our HTTP controllers, and we're not going to go into admin because this is a public controller. Let's just create a new class and we'll call it videos controller and the namespace. And then, because this is a public controller, we will extend Pyro's, uh, well, it's uh, from the streams platform, the public controller. And let's create a method called index. And there's a lot of things that we can do just within the views themselves. And I like, I don't like the idea of using a repository in the method here and then um, pushing that collection into the views. And there's a couple reasons why. First is pagination. And if we do it um, outside of the views, we have to paginate and send the pagination object as well. 
um, or they send the pagination object as the entries and then uh, on when you do that you rely entirely on um, collection methods to be able to reduce things that the uh, user can see if you want to customize things so if we leave it in the view what we can do is uh, allow people to publish the add-on and then start modifying the views and add a little bit more uh, logic in there like if they want to reduce uh, for instance if you want to block who can see these videos um, based on their user group then you just have to publish the views and add that kind of test there if user is logged in you know whatever logic you want to use then show the videos otherwise give them a button to log in so it's really hard to do that when all of that logic is wrapped up into the the controller so some stuff goes in the controller some stuff doesn't and um, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as we move along here one thing that I do want to do in the controller is add like metadata and a breadcrumb so um, there's a few things if we take a look at the public controller um, all it does is check for maintenance mode on the front end and it constructs the parent but it um, extends the base controller which is also uh, if we hop to this class the base controller is also in streams and what this one does is a little bit more involved in um, it resolves some of these things that people tend to use a lot in controllers that way you don't have to constantly inject them in and um, it's relatively cheap so um, I just include those here so that you can just use them and forget about it. If you need to create a public controller like a resources controller for an API that's lighter than this, you know, feel free to use the, the you know, your own controller or create one. It's extremely easy. They're just layer belt controllers. This one just so happens to have uh, some middleware and stuff built in. You can always um, extend the base controller and then just not construct, for example, or copy some of this middleware stuff. Um, it's kind of up to you so that's how that works so if we go back to our controller and we're doing index I'm just going to return this view make and uh, views are like I said before I think it was maybe the first um, video views and config and language files um, as well as some other things are, are always prefixed by the add-on namespace so in our case we're going to be doing anomaly dot module dot uh, oops, videos and now what we're working with is the views directory and resources so we can just do videos slash index and uh, up till this point what we're referencing is this so views slash index I'm just going to make that uh, video slash index rather videos and index dot twig okay oh, hi. and uh, while we're at it let's go ahead and route this so if we hop over here uh, just plain old videos and we're going to uh, do it on the public videos controller so we should be able to hit this and get this uh, this view Go here. Uh, let's see what we got going on. View uh, make. What did I do wrong? Oh, I'm not returning it. <laughs> So make sure to return your view. You can't just magically expect things to happen. So we've got a basic, um, you know, text output. So normally what you'd want to do is um, themes rely on a content block, and that's kind of where your theme ends, and then your content gets inserted into it with twig blocks. So to uh, to leverage that, you're going to want to use the extends and then reference your theme uh, and that'll pick up the active theme I usually like to just if I'm gonna redistribute something I always use the dot namespace if I'm just working really fast then um, you know this is plenty the reason I use the full namespace is because uh, I don't know what people want to do with my, my add-ons and 
if they're switching up themes you know you can do a lot of crazy stuff with themes all the way up to like switching out themes depending on what page you're looking at so it helps to have the namespace in there to give the exact idea of exactly what you want so um, I'm just kind of flying through stuff here right now so we'll use theme uh, layouts and default which there should always be a default layout in every single theme ever um, that's one constant that we can assume and then we're going to define the content block and what this will do is extend the content block from our theme or replace it rather just like a normal uh, uh, twig theme let's go into core real quick of starter theme resources views layouts uh, and again this is we're in the view layer we're referencing a view so theme is referencing right here uh, we could easily use anomaly dot theme uh, actually pyro cms dot theme dot starter <clears throat> so default and what this is doing is it's going to replace this because we're extending this uh, this layout and that layout's just a view it's called layout because it's in your layouts directory so let's put our high here there we go <laughs> okay hopefully I can edit that out um, so let's go ahead and add a breadcrumb since we see it up there and it's all uh, it's empty and if you noticed on our public base controller, we have the breadcrumbs here that we can already use. And we've also got the, uh, where is it? The template super variable that gets pushed into views as well. So let's leverage both of those things and add some meta information as well as, um, there's no meta title here, as well as a breadcrumb. So. Let's do uh, the key will be the text. So the breadcrumbs will be, um, it's added by key and URL. So the key will be model and the URL will be, uh, we'll just get it in here right, uh, right quick like this. And let's go ahead and add a home one too, just to show the effect. Um, like that, and then let's add, uh, so this is the template and we're going to add um, a meta title and meta title meta description and meta keywords are going to be used by pretty much any theme that you look at just as kind of like a rough standard so meta title videos and here we have our breadcrumb and we've got our meta title up here and the meta title, the meta title works because again, back here in this default, um, what we're doing is we're including a metadata partial, and that partial is here. So it's using the template super variable, and this is just a simple collection. So we're using array access basically here to get the meta title out of it, and we're just translating it for good measure. Um, so we'll call it good with that. And now we want to show the videos that we have. So I'm going to do set videos. And I'm going to use the entries function, which comes with the streams platform, uh, the, the streams plugin, and um, videos. And typically you'll see the syntax like this um, it's the stream namespace and then the stream slug. However, since they're both the same, I can just use one. And let's just get them all. And uh, what I would normally do is we will loop here. And then I'm going to end up putting uh, videos.render or links. Um, this is the, actually, instead of using git, we'll use paginate, paginate rather. Uh, videos render, and that's raw. And that's basically calling this on there. We could leave it either or, but um, I, I like using the attribute access with presenters. Um, and then we'll loop over. So for video in videos, uh, 
Uh, let's put this in a list. And oh, come on. We'll do uh, video title. So if we reload, there we go. Perfect test video. Um, let's order these <clears throat> alphabetically. And what I'm doing here, this is um, kind of a cool uh, feature in Pyro. The entries function, if you check out documentation, it, re it returns, in this case, an entry criteria uh, object, which extends the eloquent criteria object that's being documented there. Um, basically what it is, it's a safe wrapper for the query, the query builder. So most everything you can do in a query builder, after that entries point, you can do um, anything almost anything you would normally do with a with an eloquent query builder because stream entries are they directly extend um, eloquent so this is just kind of like a safe wrapper for that and we want to order by a title ascending okay so that's good oh uh, oh you know what let's order by uh, that's for, for another video um, Sort order. Or let's just do. Yeah. Yeah, I have an idea. Slug. We'll order by slug. Um, a title is translated, so we would want to do a join on translations, and I'll, I'll show you that another time. But um, for now, we'll just use a slug since that pretty much represents what we're what we're going after. So now let's do just a quick view for uh, viewing this, um, for viewing the video. And let's go back to our, close that out. Don't need that. We'll need that. Uh, so it's to our service provider. And let's do videos slash slug. <clears throat> And we're going to take this and we're going to define it as an array here and what we're doing is basically um, it's the path to a, a definition and by definition usually it's a shortcut would be just the controller method and this gets pushed into the uses parameter for uh, for the router and if we go to add-on provider and do routes uh, register routes what you'll see is if it's not an array then it just pushes and in, into, into uses um, if there's no verb defined in the array then it just use any if there's no constraints then there's none and then it sets the add-on um, so that you can def you can tell which add-on is responsible for um, responsible for this view and that, that comes into play a little bit later with especially with like shortcuts so like module semicolon semicolon or colon colon rather um, that's determined by whatever is set here and if there's nothing set here it can't figure out what module is active and it won't it won't do that stuff but, uh, but sometimes that's kind of handy so if you need it then that's good to know um, and then if the uh, it'll set up a resource controller if there's no at symbol and then other than that it's going to set up a verb um, based method so generally it's going to be any the uri the route and then where constraints. So that's just kind of what's working behind the scenes here. It's very, very similar um, to just routing. It just tends to be a lot faster. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do uses. And we're going to do view. And um, you'll notice this um, pattern right here. We could go ahead and use like videos. We could, we could do it this way. Let's do the HTML, and by documentation, this is referring to the, um, the HTML builder. We'll do HTML link, uh, the, let's see, videos, watch, and then video slug, video title. Uh, we don't need to escape this one because it's safe, a safe function. And then if we reload, uh, we'll see that if we click on this, then we get the route that we're after. But it's kind of annoying to do that typing for one, and two. If what what if we are shipping this and we want um, someone to be able to change it? They're going to have to go in and change all of the views. 
you're gonna have to change uh, the route they're gonna have to do some stuff that just doesn't make any sense so this is where model routers come in and if you recall when we created the video it came with this uh, the video model obviously but then the video router and by default you probably don't need to know this but it's good to know that video models come with a base router called the entry router and that does, that takes care of most of the heavy work um, by default. And the video router is where you would put something that uh, is a little bit more complicated or you need some custom logic to, um, to generate a route. So a quick example of how this works, um, we will just use, uh, for, the, uh, for the actual path, we'll use the route method and view and what we need in order to make that work is define this as a named route just like you normally would in Laravel we're just defining the properties here that get pushed into the method and this is gonna take on a very uh, simple um, a simple pattern so you start with the dot namespace and then you start with and then after that you have the um, the stream slug of the model that you're going to be using this off of and then the uh, uh, the method name usually is what I use the the kind of identifying key so if we were going to like delete this then you could do it like this or if we're, we're doing views so we'll just we'll go like that and so because we're calling this off of a model um, it's going to basically assume it's going to be able to look back and be like, okay, so this this model is in the videos module, and this model, um, it's it's stream slug that's associated with it is videos, so we don't have to type all that stuff, and we can just go straight here. If we wanted to, we could, and sometimes if you're using the route based off of mismatching models, you can define the whole thing. It's just kind of you know a shortcut or whatever, but um, this will will fully automate that. So if we reload, uh, go back to videos, reload. Uh, oh, forgot one step here. Um, I, I've mentioned before, but I always try and bind the um, generated models to my own. So what we're going to do here, just, just do that now. We're going to bind them. Um, videos entry. And we're going to bind that to the video model. And then this should work fine. Here we go. So what that does is it kind of gives us um, the system doesn't know where this model is in particular in as far as the module. So if we bind it to this one, it'll resolve this model and it'll be able to find its position here and look back until it finds a directory that's named similar to this. Whatever module, whatever extension, whatever you know, wherever the the model is, it's going to look back until it finds an identifying. Um, folder here and then from there it can it can determine um, the rest of the uh, the uh, named route parts it can determine this part okay so that's good let's go ahead and make that view um, I'm just going to copy and paste this and do view and um, let's make that method And in this case, um, I do want to take the video in the controller method because I want to add breadcrumbs and uh, template information based on that video. So what I'm going to do is inject the video repository interface. Call that videos. I'm going to do if we can't find this video. Uh, we'll do find by slug. We'll have to create this. And we're passing the slug up here per our route. If we can't find it, it's abort 404. Otherwise we can go on. Okay, and it's going to want this, so let's go ahead and create that. I'm not going to worry about documenting it. Uh, hop over to this repository here and uh, satiate our requirements. Turn this model 
where slug. I like the magic method sometimes, but I don't always use them. So find by slug, return the first, perfect, and I can tell you right off the bat if we're going to reload uh, this page, we're going to get that the interface is not um, instantiable, and that's because we haven't bound the interface to the interpretate or the uh, the implementation. You can go ahead and use the video repository right out of the bat. I always make it um, a habit to use the repository. I just I. This is how I work. Feel free to use the repository directly, though. I'm just going to bind the uh, the interface. Oops. To the video repository. Perfect. Okay, and then we just need to update that. Uh, that's good, that's good. And we'll do view. And let's add one more. It's going to be video title. And let's just go ahead and use video route view for the uh, URL here. And if you want to see what this spits out, it doesn't spit out the URL, it spits out the path, the you know, the path. Just like that, just like we uh, defined in the uh, in the route. And uh, use the video title here too. You'll see sometimes I have getters for field attributes, and that's only because what I am doing is distributing add-ons that I have to ensure. Um, have this access for a long long time so instead of depending on an, an attribute access like this I have to make an interface just in case title becomes something different I can still use that get title method and return something different and that's just one of the benefits of using an interface um, if you're not if you don't need it don't use it just delete them okay now what we're gonna do is just pass that video uh, just like we normally would using Laravel to our uh, to our view okay in our view all right so we've got the title here we've got the title here we can go back and watch the videos uh, we can see the index here test video okay and so now what I want to do is use that embed so I'm going to access the video. In hindsight, I probably should have called that something different. I hate when two are right next to each other like that. And then I want to call the fluid method that I uh, was talking about, and we're going to escape that. There it is. OK. Let's go ahead and make a header. Let's put that up top. And this fluid, um, if you look over pres presenters, it's the same as this. Um, but on the video field type presenter, uh, and everything is decorated in the view. Remember that everything gets decorated in the view, um, unless you do something inside the view that, for whatever reason, would return um, a non decorated item. Everything gets decorated. So this is uh, calling this. We could use embed too, or we could use the URL, or we could use uh, an ID, what have you. But I want the fluid output. Let's do that. Let's uh, put the description here. Perfect. So good enough for now. Um, Let's start taking a look at some of this other stuff here. Uh, one thing, we do have to have a series tied to the video that's required. So let's go ahead and like prefix this with the series. We'll do that here as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get it. Let's see. So video.series, uh, relationship field types always return either the relation or if you access it like this, 
then uh, it'll return the actual uh, object. So we want the series title. Oh, whoopsies. Wrong view. Just like that. Okay, and we'll link those up later. So, test video. Now we want to add it to our breadcrumb. And we'll just kind of do the same thing. Just like a normal relation. And we're going to end up doing... Let's just go ahead and make this route now since we'll need it. Series route view. Go back into our service provider and create series slug. And this will be series and series view. And let's just go ahead and make our index too since we're thinking ahead a little bit. Okay, that should do it. Come back over here and let's check that out. And since we know we're going to need it anyways, I'm going to replace the series with a link here. All right. So this will let us view that series. We haven't made that just yet. Um, and then if we're looking at everything, we can also click there. So that does a good job. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to show you before wrapping this video up is how to um, start displaying maybe like some related entries. And while this is pretty simple, if you've got a firm understanding of how Laravel works, um, it might not be so obvious otherwise. So let's take a look at series. And I want to, um, we're going to build out that series view, the view series view. And I want to show you how we can display the series and then display the videos within that series. So let's go back to uh, let's see here. Let's go back to our service provider. We've already got these set up. So let's go ahead and create this series controller. And it extends the public controller. And we'll create, let's just copy and paste actually these for now. I love copying and pasting. All right. Let's do a quick search for video. And we'll replace it with series. Preserve the case. Let's see here. Videos. Let me go ahead and cheat. Place. Oops. Oh, that's right. Okay. Do do. Skip. Do that one. Do that one. Oh, I would. Let's see. That's fine. 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 All right. Well, they kind of messed some things up. But let's go ahead and fix those real quick. Video series view. videos like that and then we'll show series after videos and normally we would want to probably name this route as well and then do something like uh, uh, in, you know inject the router up here and uh, use um, use like series dot index or series dot uh, yeah series dot index and then videos dot index here but um, since I'm running short of time I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do it this way Might have been a little bit more work than it was good for. Okay, so we've got home, videos, 
and I'm going to go ahead and add series as well. And again, you would normally do like a series.index route there. Uh, because you're naming routes normally, all you have to do um, if you wanted to use like uh, URL, I think maybe that's on the controller. It is. Series dot index, for example. I'll go ahead and copy that down here too. That's just a better way of doing things. And then over here, we just want to make sure that we are naming. As let's copy this here. Series dot index, and normally we would want to, I would say route all of our um, front end uh, routes because what this enables us to do not only is it more convenient but a very important um, tidbit and I'm not going to get into it too much now because it's more of an in-depth thing but um, while it's convenient yes it also allows us to publish these route or uh, 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 publish like this add-on and then we can include for instance, in our resources slash um, application reference folder, we can include a routes file there um, and override this route by name. So if we define the same route using the same name later on in the boot cycle, it will actually replace this URL. And the posts module, for example, is going to be updated so that instead of the kind of wonky configuration values you have to use now to get separate uh, different kinds of permalinks, all you have to do is override the routes with your routes.php file and uh, it makes it just way easier, way cleaner and uh, just a, a super cool way to do things. So as I'm just going to copy this, videos, index, great. So just give you an idea, that's kind of what your, your routes preferably should look like for the front end. Alright, I probably botched this all up, but let's take a look here series index I'm just going to copy this for now and let's open up the index um, videos do, 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 do. okay so uh, you know what this is going to work out just just fine let's do our uh, uh, this is an index of uh, of series so let's go ahead and just do series equals entries videos and since it does the the namespace does not match the stream slug we have to have the namespace and the stream slug here and we'll order by slug blah 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 that's fine series and series I think you can actually do this which is pretty cool we'll find out uh, we don't need this series stuff uh, as a link because we're actually viewing the series Okay, let's check this out. Okay, series controller, because the name is already in use, that means we probably didn't extend correctly. Uh, but we can draw a series controller. Let's see here. Oops, that's not right. I knew that was going to get me in trouble. Okay, now all we have to do is bind this repository interface just like we did the other one. So to do, do that, I'm going to come back down to my service provider. And again, you don't have to do this. I just, I really like to. It's a really good habit to get into. Makes your code more robust. Perfect. So we got here. Uh, for far so it can't find that and it's because the method does not exist um, let's go ahead and do that now series controller uh, do, 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 do. and put that into our repository here Okay, series interface, fine. Oh, gee whiz, I'm just messing stuff up all over the place here. 
Uh, this should go into our series repository interface. And yeah, that's a little weird, but we'll leave that there. The naming conflict is kind of strange, but that's that's okay. Okay, so now we're viewing this one, and let's see what the index looks like. So we've got our test series, and the other one, if you notice, just because we copied and pasted, it's actually working uh, okay. Um, we'll double check that here in a second. So we've got our test series, that's fine. And now let's click on the, uh, let's see, we don't have a route set up for series view. So let's go back in here and make sure that that exists. Series.view. Okay, oh, and you know why it is, is because we did not bind our uh, base model. And, you know, I might come up with a way to fix having to do this or kind of automate it or, or like set a default. But as of right now, um, you know it's not too big of a pain it's just kind of good to know that this is why this has to be you have to bind your your actual model to your generated model to to give the system um, a concept of like location so it can do some other kind of cool automations for you all right here we go now it should work just fine we click on here we'll get the proper view uh, or the route and now let's load up this series view. Um, I'm actually going to take the videos index, just copy and paste this little part right here. Okay, so uh, we'll replace video with series. So now we've got the series title and the series description. And what I want to do is loop over the series uh, videos. So I'm going to do um, set videos equals series dot videos dot paginate. And what you're probably going to guess is we don't have that videos method defined. That, that we have the video to series, but we don't have that reverse relationship. So we'll need to set that up. And then down here, we'll just keep videos.render. Um, we don't need the series link in this one. So if we reload, we'll probably get an error. Um, let's make sure that our, let's see, series controller. Do, 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 do. Got back series, series view. Ah. Oh, geez. I accidentally copied this stuff into the wrong one. So I'm just going to back this up just a little bit. And put it into the correct view. Okay. So we've got that, so we don't have this, and it's nice that it doesn't break, that's good, but it could leave you wondering. We don't have this defined, this video's method defined. So let's go back to our series model. Um, what's actually being returned, or what we have here, if we were to dump this, we would have the series presenter, because again, we're in the view, and the views get decorated automatically. Um, but the presenters, if you check out documentation, they have kind of a graceful way of like taking an attribute or a uh, call method and looking around for what it should do. If you don't use the explicit method on the presenter or the explicit method on the on the uh, the decorated object, then it does kind of like a guessing game, like using uh, mutable methods like get or is. So um, if we just left it like this, the first guess would be get videos. And uh, um, that's just kind of an idea of like how that guessing works. But we want to ex specifically use the videos method. We'll come back over here, series model, pop that open, and define that. Oh, I'm terrible at my reverse relations, so let's see if I can do this. This uh, has many video model class, and then uh, it'll be the series ID over there. I think that should do it. Let's find out. Perfect. So this returns the uh, the related videos off there, and what we're doing is we're using the relation. We could um, uh, we're using the relation so that we can use that paginate or paginate method here. 
And if we wanted to do something like this, we could check out that that pagination is working just fine. Okay, so that's how you uh, would start working with relations and kind of um, get things the way that you want them. Um, I'll go ahead and leave it here for now for the videos. Kind of shows you the basics of the metadata and everything. Um, you got into the router, you got into um, uh, you know kind of the breadcrumbs and like building the basics of an output. From here there's a lot of different things that you can do. I mean the possibilities in Pyro are like literally endless and they're all pretty easy to do. You just kind of have to know what to look for. It reminds me of when I very first learned Laravel there was so much potential. There was all these patterns and like cool tools that um, that Laravel was bringing to the table and Pyro is very much the same way. It, it's it's like Laravel with like a stack of awesome sauce on top of it. And uh, it's just a matter of kind of exploring and finding out what these tools are and where to use them. And it can really help you build, uh, you know, both very, very fast, rapid applications or websites. And it can also help you build some seriously solid uh, applications as well. So um, I think that does it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to making some more. I'll probably extend this series a little bit as uh, people ask questions and come up with some stuff. Feel free to leave comments below. Thanks.